which fail to take action against online bullying. It follows the death of 14-year-old Hannah Smith, who was found hanged at her home in Leicestershire last week. Her family says she'd been bullied by other users on Ask FM. Today, a number of major companies have announced that they're pulling their adverts from the site. Rita Chakrabarti reports. For parents, having control of their children's online life is almost impossible, given they can access social media anywhere and at any time. David Cameron today called on people to boycott what he called vile sites, but one expert says that's not realistic. Young people do not differentiate between what is real life and what is the internet, because right now the internet is real life to young people. Popularity is no longer gauged by how many friends you have in the playground or whether you hang about with the cool kids. It's about how many friends you have on Facebook. How many of you are on Facebook? Okay, you're not going to get into trouble, it's okay. My Charles Conway and I'm going to hurry that the girl who are hungry and we feel good at coming or say all yeah, the skier here in the Afland and better blown away. Now, can anybody tell me what the age limit is for Facebook? Dan gosod i mi'r math o sylwadau roedd pobl ifanc yng Nghymru yn ei wynebu ar lein. What we've got here is we've got homophobic comments, um, we've got um, somebody being told to keep cutting themselves, um, maybe one day you'll kill yourself, uh, fingers crossed. Mae addysgu rhieni am y dechnoleg ddiweddara yn hanfodol wrth daclor broblem meddd er ymgynghorydd. This is the first generation of young people that are growing up with always-on internet access, on smartphones, on laptops, on uh, games consoles, on tablet PCs, on all of these portable devices, where the old advice of keep your computer in the living room and you can see what's happening to your child just goes out the window. And parents have got to understand that where their kids have got 24-7 access to the internet, bullies have got 24-7 access to their children. Nid eleni yn unig, mae straeon wedi dod i'r amlwg o bobl ifanc yn lladd i hunain o herwydd seiberfwlion. Adeg yma llynedd, bu farw Amanda Todd o Ganada, wythnosau'n unig ar ôl iddi roi'r fideo yma ar wefan YouTube. We've already seen cases of suicide in, in England and in Scotland and in America and in Canada and all over the world um, relating to online bullying. Um, so yes, unfortunately, I feel that it is only a matter of time before we see it in Wales. That's not easy though, is it? Because, you know, kids will come home from school, they might want to find something um, on YouTube, for example, and I'm, this from Claire in Cardiff, who's uh, texted the programme, you know, how do I stop them finding stuff that's unsuitable, even when they're looking for something that they know and she knows is, is meant to be harmless? Okay, well, on, on a site like YouTube, you can use what's called the safe search option. Um, which is um, a system that you, you log into your Google account, select Safe Search, and then that's locked and can't be taken off until you then log into the Google account again. And um, that will filter out that unsuitable material. Well, parents just need a structure from in which they can work. They need training, maybe, yeah. And, and Seema, who else have we got? Thanks very much, Tina. We have Charles online too. All right, let's talk to Charles. Hi there, Charles. Good morning, Anne. Now, I understand that you are an internet safety trainer. Oh, That's yes. right. What is that? What well, do you do? I work with parents primarily to help them to understand these internet connected technologies, to close the knowledge gap between what they know about the internet and what their kids know about the internet, which that gap is huge. Well, how, as an ordinary mum, then, how do I access you? Where do I go and find somebody like you to tell me about it? Well, I'm currently working, um, well, before the, uh, the school holidays, I've been working with um, groups of parents within schools. Okay. Um, I was taken on this year by Wrexham County Borough Council to go and visit schools and, and talk to groups of parents about what their kids are getting up to online and some of the measures they can take. Are there many people like you, then, trained up to train us? Um... There's a few of us, yeah, there's a few of us around, um, and most local councillors, I think, would probably have access to somebody like me. And are you a volunteer or are you paid by the council? I am paid by the council. Good on uh, them for being so, you know, 
proactive. Yeah, yeah, very proactive on it. Well, I just it's wonder how not many cancers is it? It's reactive because we've had these problems. Yeah, so, and now so, we're having. So, to so all right, them. Charles. For, for ordinary parents like us, who frankly don't want to have to take a degree in IT, can we easily be taught how to make our home internet safer for our kids? Well, ultimately, there are things that you can do as a parent. You can install parental control software on the computers and, and devices that your children use to block this stuff from coming onto their screen. But it's certainly not the be-all and end-all mm. of internet safety because there are so many portable devices and so many ways and so many locations in which children can access the internet that we as parents need to be talking to our kids about what is safe to do on yes. the internet, why information is safe to share, what to do if somebody says something to them on the internet that makes them feel uncomfortable. What do you tell them to say in, in that instance? Well, thinking, the, thinking, yeah, go on. The, um, the problems are the same. You know, our parents dealt with bullies, our parents dealt with strangers and sexual predators and all of these people. It's just the methods that these people are using now that have changed. And taking cyberbullying as an example, I think probably the most important thing that any parent can tell their child is not to respond to the bully. Mm. Because bullies have always taken gratification mm. from seeing the responses to their bullying. And if they don't see those responses, that gratification is taken away. Mm. But you, you look at the tragic case of, of little Hannah last week. She engaged with the bullies. She had a lot of uh, discussion, discourse with them. She wanted to. She wanted to have her own say back. Uh, you, can you really tell an 11, 12, 13-year-old not to engage with that sort of bullying. They want to make their point. They want to have their say. Uh, of course they want to have that right of reply. And in the same way that if you, Anne, opened up the Daily Mail this morning and saw an article that was absolutely full of lies about you, you would want to have your right yeah. of reply. Um, but yeah, but as you get older, you do realise that sometimes the best thing is, to, is silence. Isn't this is BBC Radio 5 Live. With Stephen Nolan. Some breaking news is coming into us here at Five Live. Britain is reported to be joining forces with America in a new transatlantic effort to stop child abuse online. And according to The Sun on Sunday, a joint task force will be set up between the UK and the United States to target criminals who share child abuse images or use the net to groom kids. It says the police minister, Damien Green, will fly to Washington tomorrow to broker a deal for the Historic Alliance, which will include the formation of a joint agency staffed by police and experts to smash child abuse rings wherever uh, they are. Charles Conway is with us uh, tonight, who runs courses for parents and schools on internet safety. Hello, Charles. Good evening. What's your reaction to this? I think this is a hugely positive step that's been needed for some time. A, a, um, a, joint, the, the, a joint operation like this on an international basis, do you actually think it can make a difference, Charles? Y yes, I do, because one, one thing that's really been needed throughout um, internet abuse has been international cooperation. Um, there are no borders when it comes to grooming. There are no borders when it comes to the distribution of indecent images of children. Um, and the law enforcement response needs to take that into account and ensure that there are no borders in law enforcement. They can already cooperate with each other, the different police forces, of course. It, time will tell in terms of what difference this actually is going to make in terms of how they uh, operate in their, in their policing function. I, I'm, I'm trying to work out myself what they're going to do differently. If they suspect a child abuse ring, they, they, they must cooperate with each other now already. Well, yes, but... Having a joint task force already in place, which has that, those links there, means that, that if a court order, for example, is needed from the UK to identify a, an abuser in America, then that can be done without having to approach the, the relevant police force who then have to re approach another body, who have to approach another body. If that task force already exists, then that can happen as an instant measure, and that can cut down the response time to these incidents significantly. Do you think there's there's any element um, of the, the the enforcement against child abuse that we can see we are winning the battle on? Well, if you look at things like uh, the Internet Watch Foundation, who are doing amazing work at the moment, um, they have had uh, reports of 
uh, indecent images of children being taken down by UK hosts within 30 seconds of them being reported. Um, so yes, we are seeing some successes in the, the reduction of, uh, of availability of this material. Okay, Charles, thank you very much indeed. And obviously, we'll have more on this story throughout the night.